Hi everyone, welcome to uh, the tips and techniques section of the podcast. Um, Thank you so much for joining me tonight. I um, wanted to share with you a couple of um, tips and a couple of technique type things that I um, was asked about on Instagram. And if you guys ever have any questions for me about... um, uh, anything, please um, include your questions in the thread on Ravelry in the Ravelry group. Um, what are you curious about? Because I'm always happy to address things on the podcast. And of course, with this new section, you can um, um, have them addressed here. Um, what I wanted to talk about tonight was um, two things joining. Um, there's been, I've had quite a number of questions about how I join. And I'll talk about that. And the other thing that I'm going to talk a little bit about is um, some tips around spinning a more consistent yarn. So the first thing that I wanted to talk about was joining. So there are lots and lots and lots of different ways to join. Um, I personally have um, one in particular that I use 99% of the time. It was taught to me at a workshop and I find that it works really, really well, really well for me. So what I do is I've got my wheel going, my fiber supply has come apart from my single and I need to get it back on. So these fuzzy bits at the end of my my fiber become entangled around my singles. And the way that I did that was I just brushed it while the twist is going and while my wheel is going. And it kind of just attaches itself just because of the twist in the yarn. And the reason why I like this join is because these fuzzy bits at the end of your fiber supply become sort of twisted around themselves as well as the single that you're spinning. And what's great about this is that you can, um, you don't really have to think about it. You don't have to worry that your single is being wrapped around your fiber supply or vice versa. And the reason why that's important is because sometimes what can happen is your fiber supply becomes wrapped literally, like not not to this extent, but this is just to illustrate, it becomes wrapped around like this. So what you've got is your singles wrapped around your yarn. And when you're plying and you're putting some pressure on that, it pulls apart. And if you're finding when you're plying that your singles break apart a lot, that might be what's going on. You also maybe aren't putting enough twist into your singles, but that's another chat for another time. Um, So the way that I have found to be really helpful is to just sort of brush the ends of my fiber supply against my single. And I I have found since I've started doing this type of a joining method, I have had many, 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 many fewer breaks when I am plying. So I hope that that's helpful. The other thing that you'll see all the time, and this is great for when you're spinning from the fold, is that you lay your single in your fiber supply. And then you start drafting as you were before. I find that for me isn't as great because I get thicker bits of fiber coming out that this single, especially when you're spinning a high twist yarn like like I am right now, this is for socks, um, I find it grabs a lot of the fiber that it's resting in and it, um, yeah, ends up just, just being a little bit counterproductive because now you're pulling a lot of extra fiber out of your fiber supply. And I also find that it makes my fiber supply a a wee bit messier. So before I go on to talking about a consistent yarn, I wanted to talk a little bit about what my hands are doing. So my right hand, which is back here, when I'm spinning a short forward draw, its only responsibility is to hold my fiber supply in one place. And with my thumb, Hang on. With my thumb, I direct where I'm going to be spinning from. And this takes a lot of practice. I, I, I spent months working on this. Um, but your fiber supply hand, wherever your thumb is and wherever it's putting pressure, that is where you will, you will be able to draft from. So slowly but surely, 
you can work your way across the top of your fiber, which is nice because then your fiber supply is being used up evenly. And if you don't like pre-preparing and pre-drafting a lot of your fiber, you don't have to because you can just sit down and start spinning. It takes a lot of practice, um, but I think it's a worthwhile skill to work on. Um, that's just my opinion, so please take it with a grain of salt. But uh, yeah, I just think it's a really great skill to have. So my left hand is my drafting hand because I'm spinning a true worsted yarn. I'm using a short forward draw. And my left hand is responsible for drafting the fiber out and smoothing it back to create a worsted single, right? So my left hand is never leaving the fiber. And what you can, what ends up happening, I think as a beginning spinner, I would pull forward and then I would often pull, like I would change. Now I have changed, if you notice, this is a short backward draw. And now I'm doing a short forward draw. And then, oh, just kind of pull back a little, look at my single, feed it in. Now I'm kind of doing a semi worse, a semi long draw. Now I'm back to worsted because I don't want to mess up the single too, too much. But um, I think as, as a beginning spinner, I wasn't very consistent in how I was spinning. And of course then my yarn is, like, is quite consistently inconsistent. Um, one of the things that you can do to start to retrain yourself if you are looking to spin a more consistent yarn and this person that's what her goals are is to spin a more consistent yarn i suspect her goals are similar to mine in that she's wanting to spin for larger projects like socks a sweater maybe um, an oversized shawl i tend to want quite consistent yarn and at a workshop that i was at um getting it's going to be a long time ago now the instructor encouraged us to try to start to retrain our hands. So when you look at the fiber and you inspect it, and I've already done this, so I'm gonna go from the other end. Part of inspecting your fiber and learning it before you start spinning is to figure out what the staple length is. So this is a merino bamboo blend and it's got nylon in it. And my staple length is about two inches, right? I can't pull the fibers apart when my hands are two inches apart. So I probably want to draft, and this is partly experience that I know this, but I probably want to draft about an inch and a half to get um, the yarn that I want, which is strong. And then I'm going to be catching all of those fibers and having them fiber lock, which is where they have enough twist in them that they're not going to come apart at about an inch and a half. So one of the things that she encouraged us to do was to take some tape and put it on your lap and take another piece of tape, sorry for the noise, and put it on your lap an inch and a half from where your other, and this is not like, this doesn't have to be so scientific, like you don't have to get out a ruler, but you know, eyeball it. That's about an inch and a half from the top of the one piece to the bottom of the other piece. And that gives you a gauge. And you're not always going to be bang on because you're going to get go on to autopilot and you're going to start thinking about other things and so on and so forth. And your hands are going to sit where they always have. But this really helped me to move to a more consistent yarn. And I still put tape on my lap when I'm spinning now. And what I do is I don't really change anything about what I was doing from previous. If you've noticed, my fiber supply hand is still where it was. My drafting hand is still where it was. But I can look past my drafting hand now to the tape and say, oh yeah, my thumb is about here. Time to pull forward. And it gets to about here and it's time to go back to the fiber supply. And it keeps me from overdrafting or from going back too far in my fiber supply. So let me just say that one more time uh, about what I'm looking at. I am still looking at what my left hand is doing. I am still watching 
where I am drafting, but the tape below gives me a guide to work within. And all I'm doing is drafting from here to here. And like I said, it's not like absolutely perfect. If you're doing like a course in, and like getting your master spinner and stuff, you'd be counting the number of treadles that you're doing versus the number of times that the flyer's going around. And you'd be thinking about um, how many twists are going into the yarn per that inch and a half. And you'd be measuring that. So we're not doing that <laughs> right now. What we're all we're doing is creating a consistent distance of draft, which is how far forward and back my left hand is traveling. And the distance of draft is going to change based on your staple length. If you're spinning a long wool like Wensleydale, your distance of draft is going to be enormous and your hands are going to be quite far apart. Actually, it's funny because Wensleydale, I was sampling it recently and that's when I got the tape back out because I was having a lot of trouble keeping my distance to draft consistent because it was so long and uh, I got the tape back out. So if you're spinning a shorter fiber like Merino, your distance of draft is going to be shorter and your hands are going to be closer together. I'm breaking and reattaching for you so that you guys can see sort of what that looks like in process. You can slow down, pause, repeat, fast forward, rewind. And that's what it looks like using my tape as a guide down on my lap. Um, when I was at the workshop, some people wanted to put the tape on a pillow. So they had the pillow up on their lap with the tape on top on the pillow. And they actually had their hands resting on the pillow and they were going from the from the bottom to the top of the tape and um, for some of them it was actually just because they were having trouble seeing and their eyesight you know was a little bit poorer and um, they found that really helpful so if you're having trouble seeing or you're not sure or you're just finding you know it's it's a little bit out of your purview um, yeah try the pillow and it gives you something to rest your hands on too which is really nice um, I think I know there's a spinner out there on Instagram that uses a pillow to spin on and she rests her hands on the pillow and of course she creates very very consistent yarns I just can't remember who it is so I really help hope that this helps you guys um, sort of a little bit more information it's probably more than you guys need but I thought I would share it anyways I'm spinning on my Lendrum tonight because I find my Lendrum is a really great teaching tool um, because it's a scotch tension only tool, uh, wheel. Oh, there's some VM. Look at that, a branch. That's kind of fun. Um, I find that there's only one variable to worry about, which is my brake band. Um, and so it's a great wheel to slow down and speed up on. And I don't have to think too, too much about what I'm doing with my feet. Um, sometimes I feel like the Lendrum is a fifth, um, limb. It just, I'm very in tune with it and it just feels really good. Um, so I would definitely, if your wheel can do scotch tension, I would recommend when you're learning a new skill to um, um, flip over to scotch tension if you're really comfortable in it like I am. Um, because like I said, there's only one variable, which is your brake speed, your take up. You, you're not adjusting your um, any anything else, which is really nice. And I know there will be other opinions out there and whatnot, but um, that's just really worked well for me um the Hanson because it's an e-spinner I wanted you guys to sort of see more what it looked like on a treadle wheel um because I think while this Hanson has a has a place absolutely um for learning some of these skills I I find it easier to teach when I'm on a wheel like the Lendrum and of course double drive you've got a lot going on you're adjusting the bobbin the uh the brake tension at the same time as adjusting your uh, flyer tension so there's sort of a lot going on on the uh, in double drive so that's why I was using the match the Lendrum tonight because I'm sure somebody will ask which is great you will have noticed that and I am on my fast flyer you'll notice that I I did adjust it at one point I I, I moved my um, my drive band down one and it's only because this is for sock yarn this is uh, Sweet George Yarns Panda in the Sitka colorway 
and this is a superwash merino panda nylon blend so it's very slippy and because it's for socks it needs I, I want it to have a lot of twist for durability in my husband's uh, shoes so uh, that's why I did that and that's why I'm on the fast flyer I think this is actually um, yeah this is a 15 to 1 whirl ratio so I actually have my whirl ratios written um, on the back of my flyer here I have it on all of my flyers written uh, in in permanent uh, ink so if you ever buy a wheel for me you'll see <laughs> not that I'm selling anything but if you ever see my wheels you'll notice that I have all my all my whirl ratios written on my flyers and on my bobbins and stuff so I hope that was helpful tonight if you guys have any other questions tips techniques things that you're burning to know um, please don't hesitate to um, leave a comment and a question in the what are you curious about thread and um, I will talk to you soon.